What's up guys? Hi and welcome to Uncle Scott's Pancast. Perhaps unsurprisingly, today we're going to talk about frying pans. We're going to talk about this Debuya Affinity. I put up that big review last week, got some feedback and questions about that. I want to go through. People have been asking about all clad pans. I'm going to give this all clad copper core a little bit of attention here in a minute. We're going to talk about pan prices. If you've not noticed, they have left orbit and are headed straight for the moon. Really, really getting up there. Things are getting out of hand. We're going to talk about that. Uh, check in on the supply chain. Talk about peanut oil just a little bit. And we might have a quick mini review of some shun kitchen shears towards the end. And possibly more. Let's get started. Okay, if you've been around the old channel this week, I've been really promoting a review I put up of this Debouye Affinity 5-ply stainless steel line frying pan. Really like that pan. I gave it a thumbs up. It's got three internal cores of aluminum and it cost me about $250. $250. Pretty solid price these days, I think. I don't know. But I've gotten about 150 or so comments and questions below that review so far. It's only been up a few days, so getting a lot of discussion going below that review on YouTube if you want to jump in. But those comments, they've kind of been, I've noticed patterns, they're kind of grouped into a couple of different themes. Um, one of the themes is people asking me if I've compared this pan to an all-clad pan. And they're asking me what I think about that and what I think about the all-clads. So what I was going to do is send people a hyperlink to that big in-depth review I did of this pan. But I started looking around and I couldn't find it. And started digging around and looking back. I've had this pan almost two years and I hate to say this, somehow I just forgot to do the review. Am I losing my mind? Maybe. I don't know. I bought this pan, I think it appeared in one video, but I never got the review done and apparently it slipped through the cracks. So I need to give this pan some attention. This is actually, I don't have time to do a big in-depth review here. This is a fantastic frying pan. I've been using this heavily for a couple of years now. Very fantastic cooking performance. It's an all-clad copper core. Now it has the, the induction-capable stainless steel on the outside. Then you've got a layer of aluminum inside. Then you've got a layer of copper. Then one more aluminum. And then the stainless steel interior cooking surface. Fantastic pan, great cooking edge to edge, really even heating performance. And like I said, I've been using it a couple of years now and I am remiss for not giving, giving this pan some more attention and some love. Somehow I thought I had, but I hadn't. So what do I think on the all clad versus the Debouye if I were to compare them? Now, most people writing in were asking about the all-clad D3 line of pans. I don't think that would be a fair comparison. That's a, tri a, a tri-ply, three-layer pan. This is a higher-end five-layer pan. Now, they do make some D5s, and I have to admit their product lineup is kind of confusing if you start digging around. They've got lots of different sheens and finishes and, and lines, so it's a little bit more confusing with the all-clads. And then you get up to this copper core line. Now the copper core, this one costs about $265 these days. And the Debouye, like I said, is about $250. So they're roughly comparable in price. As far as features and size, the Debouye, it looks a little bit bigger and it is about 3 eighths of an inch wider. This all clad is listed as a 12 inch pan. I measured it, it's actually about 12 and 3 eighths, so getting close to 12 and a half. And what you notice about it though, is that it's got this helper handle. And some people I know hate rivets. So if you go with the Affinity, you get two rivets. If you go with the all clad with the helper handle, you get four rivets. And I notice with a shout out to the rivet hating people, you do, after a couple of years, I do have a little bit of gunk or dark matter kind of around the rivets. It doesn't bother me that much, but some people really, really hate that. So now in the most important category, cooking performance, I can't tell a whole lot of difference between these pans. These are both fancy, high-end, 
in that stainless steel category. They're both kind of flagship pans for their respective brands. Uh, over the weekend, we cooked some chicken parm, or technically my wife cooked some chicken parm, and I asked her to make a couple of batches in each of these pans. And she said she couldn't tell any major differences between the pans either. So I think you're getting good, high quality cooking performance with each, both in the same price range. If you're gonna pick between the two, what are the differences? What factors do you look at? It really kind of comes down to aesthetics and what's important to you. If you have trouble moving, if you get a lot of food in either one of these pans, they're gonna be pretty heavy. If you have trouble moving a heavy pan, you might wanna go with the one with the helper handle. Um, for me, I don't have much trouble there, but just aesthetically, the way the pan looks, I kind of prefer this more French style handle. Um, it's a little bit more curved. All clads is straight. This one's a little taller, so you get a little bit more curve to the handle there. The uh, Debouillet is also slightly taller, and it just kind of looks a little bit bigger. And if place or of manufacturer or origin is important to you, the, the Debouillet is made in France and the Allclad is made in North America. So I've got one of my granddads was kind of an iron and steel worker in Birmingham, Alabama, the Pittsburgh of the South. Who came up with that one? One of my wife's grandfathers was an iron and steel worker in Pennsylvania where these are made. So if that North American, made in North America, made in America, and American steel workers are important to you, there's nothing wrong with going with the all clad. Both great pans though, both fantastic pans. Now we touched on prices for these two pans. Someone named The Game wrote in and said, if budget is not an issue, would you rather go towards one of these affinities or an Inoquivra, Inoquivra? Now the Inoquivras are also made by Debouillet. These are copper, stainless steel line copper. And here is where things go off the rails. If you think $250 is pretty high for this pan, this pan here, I just checked, over $700. Holy cow. Now the most important thing to remember about that is if you do buy one of these pans, make absolutely sure use one of my affiliate shopping links. <laughs> Tough to get rich selling spatulas, just gotta say. Now, if price is truly not an issue, then yeah, I probably would go with the copper. I would look at the Inacuivras. I would look at, if you can find them, some of those 250 series Maviels. They've come out with the 200 series. It's a little bit thinner these days, but if you can still find those 250s, those are good ones. When it comes to cookware, I think if you can get the thickest, most high quality copper you can get and cook on a gas stove. That's kind of the pinnacle for a home cook, in my opinion. So 700 for this one, kind of makes 250 for this one seem like a little bit of a bargain. Got a cooking tip from Jarrett McElroy. He watched that Affinity review and when we made that pan sauce with those sticky bits left over from the pork chops, I noted that we had the timing off and it took about 20, 25 minutes to make that pan sauce. He says, a suggestion for your pan sauce. Have that chicken stock and wine reduce while frying your pork chops. So get that going in a saucepan. Go ahead and reduce that down. Then he says to remove the pork chops, saute the other ingredients, pour that in and finish that reduction in just three to five minutes. That seems to make a lot of sense to me. Gonna try that next time. Thanks to Jarrett. Joe Idaho wrote in, he said, okra must be a regional food in your area. I imagine being from Idaho, if that's where he's from, that's in his screen name. He probably didn't get a whole lot of fried okra out in Idaho, where I grew up on a farm in rural Alabama. Fried okra was a staple of the diet. Side note here, someone commented on the sliminess of fried okra. If you think fried okra is a little slimy, it's actually not. Once you get it breaded up and fried up, it gets a little crunch to it almost. Boiled okra, on the other hand, perhaps the slimiest food in the entire world. Not for me. Fried, yes. Boiled, no. Let's talk about peanut oil. Peanut oil. We, we remarked last pancast on how expensive it is, about $16 for a gallon of it at Walmart of all places. And Justin Imlay wrote in and said with those prices, he's not going to deep fry his turkey this Thanksgiving. That's kind of a shame. 
So it seems like the peanut oil is going to cost more than the turkey for Thanksgiving. Now, in a little mini big box battle, I went to Sam's and Costco and checked on bulk peanut oil prices. And it's pretty darn close. At Sam's, the member's mark, you get 35 pounds, which is 4.5 gallons for $49.98, roughly 50 bucks. Over at Costco, you get 4.6 gallons, a tenth of a gallon more for one penny more, $49.99. So an ever so slight edge to Costco in bulk peanut oil. But really when it comes to peanut oil, I think both of those companies are winning and probably we consumers are the ones on the losing end of the stick. So I did a little checking on the labels of the peanut oil. Here are the one from Costco. Notice here in big, bold letters, produced with genetic engineering. Hmm. And the countries of origin, USA, Nicaragua, Nicaragua, Argentina, India, and Senegal. Senegal. Why are we getting peanut oil from Senegal? Now, I got no problem with a Senegalese peanut farmer getting up and doing a hard day's work on the old peanut farm. But where are all the cost savings coming from? Why can we not get this peanut oil from Alabama, Georgia, or wherever else? They grow peanuts in the United States. Is there just not enough of it? Or is there some sort of cost advantage to getting it from overseas? And that's what worries me a little bit because overseas, say in Senegal, do they have the FDA? Do they have OSHA? Do they have a minimum wage? Do they have Social Security? Are they using fertilizers that might not be acceptable here, things that might be banned? Are they using lower quality processing facilities? How can it be so much cheaper to grow peanuts and peanut oil in Senegal, in Africa, or India, and ship it all the way to the United States? Is it sitting on a tanker off the port out by Los Angeles and Long Beach? I don't know, but something just seems horribly amiss there. It seems a little bit awry. Now let's take a quick look at these Shun kitchen shears. They are made in Japan. These are about nine inches long, tip to tail. The blades are made of a high carbon stainless steel alloy. For deep cleaning, the blades are easy to take apart and put back together again. The bottom blade has a serrated edge and a bone notch. The top blade's handle can be used as a lid lifter screwdriver tool, which is nice to have in a pinch. Here they are cutting things, such as cardboard, string, branch from one of my wife's house plants. I really hope she doesn't notice. And they cut really well. These shun shears have a solid and substantial feel in the hand. They cut really well and are a great upgrade for just about any kitchen knife block. They get a thumbs up. Okay, if you enjoyed this pancast, look on this screen for others you might enjoy checking out. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out the shopping links and other relevant links below the video. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again next time on Uncle Scott's Pancast.